Hello and welcome back. In this short lecture, you are going to learn about virtual network routing and its connectivity. Let's take an example where you have one of the virtual network. Uh, within this virtual network, you have subnet 1 and the subnet 2. And also there are some other uh, resources on each of these subnets. As you know by this time, when you configure any of the virtual network, by default, all the resources can go and communicate with the internet that's outbound is fully allowed meaning that technically there are some kind of default routes are already configured uh, which will be done by microsoft azure automatically in a minute we are going to do that we are going to configure we are going to override those default routes and we would redirect those traffic and all that but just to assume that when you have your own virtual network definitely all the virtual machines can go and communicate with the internet the reason being the back end you have already a default route which is configured you might be thinking that uh, there could be some kind of network security groups which will actually block this access yes that uh, will block but the route path is already configured and it's a straightforward and you're just applying some kind of filter what if if you wanted to change this default behavior let's say what happens if you want to block one of these paths let's say for these machines shouldn't go to internet uh, but uh, subnet 2 will be allowed for the internet how can we allow by going this path to internet like this this is allowed but going here is completely blocked so this is where the path can be configured that's nothing but a routing path so this is where we do the custom routes and we change the default uh, routing behavior if you think why we may have to do this let's say uh, you wanted this entire traffic to be diverted to a, sp a specific five wall appliance and then it should be filtered uh, so the default path is everything is going to the internet instead of that you don't want that to go to internet instead you should uh, expect the traffic should go to maybe a firewall so that's a default uh, you're overriding your default route and you can configure such things so let's jump into microsoft azure portal and do similar configuration and try to understand uh, how it looks like the custom path custom route path and default routes when you go back to Microsoft Azure portal and have a look on one of the virtual machine, let's say if this is a virtual machine and uh, within this you have the networking and each uh, virtual machine will have associated a network card will exist. So just click on the network card and you just go to here effective uh, routes. Uh, this is where it's going to list the routing paths that it's going to use to route the traffic or the path it's going to set it let's try to understand this effective routes that are listed here you see here there are a few of the routes which are default and the first one if you look at here which talks about anything with the 10.1.0 series it's gonna communicate with the next hop as the virtual network so it will just route the path to virtual network and from there it's going to communicate and similarly if anything is not as a 10.1.0 slash 26 uh, sorry 16 then uh, it's going to hand it over to other routes so let's say you're trying to browse google or let's find out the google's ip address let's say you're trying to browse the google website so it's going to point to this ip and when it's not following this ip address anywhere it's gonna actually take the 0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 that means if any any of the ip address it's gonna allow over the internet this is how it's gonna you're getting the internet today you're getting internet because default route is accepted because 0.0.0 .0 slash 0 is already configured as a default route so that's why you're getting the internet and uh, if you see here this is another uh, uh, subnet where it's you're you're gonna communicate with that and these are all other uh, series similarly so we have for this virtual machine all these are enabled as the default route paths 
within networking you have a concept called longest prefix match uh, which is very important when you're dealing with routing because when it says that it is that i'm going to use uh, whatever the route entry matches my destination prefix most closely so when it comes to the closest one uh, let's say if these two are close then it just takes a preference over the the longest one as this so it, it doesn't go to the internet instead it simply comes here and it will check it check out so this is how uh, it's going to work within the routing now let's jump into the real demo like we wanted to block or we wanted to overwrite this the default route so this machine shouldn't go to uh, internet so how we do is we simply go back to our virtual network so in this case i'll just go to virtual network is here this is the virtual network that's a vnet so i'll just go to the vnet and then if you just go to the subnets and within this subnet you have something called route table so oops missed out so here you have the route table so when you create actually a route table uh, you would be able to see here so you can apply those route table to override that configuration so that what happens is whatever the default configuration you have done so that's gonna override with this specific route table that you are actually configured here so as a next step i'm gonna create a route table and then i will come back here and apply this route table whatever we have created so to create the route table just go to create a new resource and then type as route table so you would see a resource called route table so click on create uh, this is a straightforward inputs that you need to give here to in order to create this route table so i'm just going to select my uh, dns and in this case it should be region as east years and i'm going to give here the name as the block internet route if you have your on premises you may have to choose this also no but in my case i'm going to create entire this route table to be applicable for as your resources so i'm going to choose as yes and then you can apply your tags for the billing purpose and review it and create a route so it's going to create a route table the route table is created let's go to the resource and if you see here uh, from the routes there are no routes currently configured and also there's no subnets got associated what happens is if you associate those subnets the configured routes whatever you're going to configure here will be applied to those subnets that's how it's going to work so i'm going to create a first route so i'll simply click on add and give a route name uh, here i can say that this is going to be block uh, internet and uh, here the address prefix like you can as, as we talk uh, anything that was not mentioned within the route table we wanted to block it because internet is uh, open means it's it can access on a different ip so the best one is as this so i'll just give the four dots and then slash zero so anything here but the next hop i'll select as none so what happens is if anybody is trying to access so the prefix is this that means any of the ip like you take any website's ip address uh, the next hop is none it's, it's not going to deliver anywhere the packet so click on ok so that would actually create the route table for us now the route is uh, successfully created now we have not at assigned to any of the subnets so as a next step what we'll do is we will associate with our one of the subnet so the first option would be either you can directly assign from here or you can go back to your virtual machine and the similar configuration what we have done let's see i'll just open in a new tab here uh, we can go back to our virtual machine in this case this is my virtual machine let's say the dns demo vm1 and i simply go back to my networking and here this is my of vnet so within the vnet you have the subnet so this is where i can open my subnet and this time if i just go back here i can be able to see here route table i simply select here and 
save or i can directly even do it from the route table by associate here and all you have to do is you need to know what's your virtual network so in this case this is my demo vnet1 that's the only vnet1 we have within my resource and i can simply select the default so it's gonna click ok that's gonna actually save and apply so it does the same thing as you go from here uh, from the vnet properties and then the subnet um, or you can directly go back here and do the configuration so now it's associated so i'll just go ahead and uh, one more time i'll just click on here so this time you should be able to see here as the block internet route is configured let's say you wanted to have one more route where you wanted to send the internet traffic to your firewall so what you're going to do is you would actually go back to the route and you would create one more route uh, saying that this could be my uh, firewall uh, firewall appliance maybe in this case it could be a checkpoint or maybe sofas or whatever it is so you can give your uh, the name of that your firewall so that it's more meaningful later point you can select here as a virtual appliance and you can give your appliance ip address so let's say if the ip is 10.0.1. .1. maybe sorry 0. Dot maybe here in this case maybe 200 so that could be your firewall uh, appliance and give you the address prefix so all that addresses ranges will route the traffic with your firewall ip so let's say if i want uh, if i want my all the dns specific queries should go to my route table i'll simply give this uh, specific uh, subnet information and then it will simply Go and create that specific route table and all the traffic will go and route with that ip address which is configured as the firewall appliance since we have two now route tables or uh, within this route uh, you have a two entries let's go back to one of the virtual machine and see what happens let's say i want to go to demo vm01 and by networking and then i'll simply go back and select my virtual network interface and click on effective route this will open up here and you see here what happened the default ones are all showing as a default but the custom routes that we created showing as the user created so what happens is uh, here one become as the invalid earlier this was an active but we have created a very similar one if you see here uh, all these ip address uh, prefixes which is similar but here we have said that next hop is none and this explains the address prefix as identical so there are different scenarios where address prefixes when it becomes as the identical uh, we might have to consider a special case so let's talk about those special case scenarios what happens and uh, what are those special cases when we can see these kind of identical things let's say you have uh, a vnet to vnet peering which we are going to talk in the upcoming lectures or maybe you can check out in the networking section uh, vnet to vnet peering is nothing but your virtual network to another virtual network you can peer that means all these machines in the vnet to virtual network 2 can communicate with virtual network one maybe a subnet one or subnet two also can be resources can be communicated so there could be default routes which are provisioned automatically by default when you do the vnet to vnet pairing and also uh, there is another uh, special cases which we are going to learn in the upcoming lectures about the service endpoints if you are uh, trying to use the service endpoints it's going to create a default uh, routes automatically and also let's say you are trying to create from your virtual network to a express route scenario in that situation also you're gonna get the uh, default routes so for express route definitely there would be a different protocol you're gonna use uh, that's called um, 
border gateway protocol that's bgp protocol so the bgp protocol is uh, works as a gateway level and uh, for that also it could be a different routes uh, will come up and those are very identical routes will be created so what happens in these situations we talked about the identical uh, identical route uh, address address prefixes and then in that situation like a VNet to VNet peering or express route or maybe service endpoints in these situations or in these scenarios it's gonna uh, go for a different path that's called so the order that it's going to apply is a custom so the first one would be the custom is the highest priority then it's going to uh, work with the bgp route and then the system default route uh, will be accepted so this is where it's going to check and uh, it's going to work in that fashion this concludes the lecture on virtual network routing and connectivity and uh, just make sure that uh, what is going to override uh, for the identical this could be one of the exam question or might be a real-time problem that you might encounter all the time the custom takes a precedence and then a BGP and then the system let's say you are blocking at custom that's going to apply the policy uh, and it's going to ignore the BGP and the system similarly if you have a policy on a BGP route path and then it's going to ignore the system but if that uh, is conflicting with the custom custom will take over the preference over the route path that's how it's going to work thank you for watching this i'll catch you in the next lecture